I just realized that I forgot to uh, film a no an opening to the video, so I'm doing this inside the house. Um, this in this episode, we will be looking at uh, reconnecting the fuel line uh, or, or making the bracket for the for the new fuel pump, and uh, doing the valve covers and push covers, uh, push rod cover, and the I believe we got the uh, front shocks in. So that's what we're gonna uh, you'll be seeing in during this episode. So I just wanted to take a minute to um, show what I'm doing. Uh, this piece, which was actually this was. Uh, rolled up in uh, like a half circle and then bolted to this this one was actually the, holding the casing is completely disintegrated so figured nothing too 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 complicated or shouldn't be anyway so I'm gonna just uh, mimic this I'm gonna I already hammered this out straight so I'll be able to trace um, you know the right. shape onto the sheet metal here we go so this should fit pretty well I uh, don't mind the jagged edges it's just <laughs> I needed to make these lips these little um, these little pins that that fold back back onto uh, the pump to hold it in place so all right here's the finished product so we replaced this piece of crap rusted thing with a brand new holster so it squeezes this pump in nice and secure and all I got to do is drill the holes uh, on the side, like underneath here. So once I put it against the frame, I'll just drill the hole. Like I'll scratch the holes in where uh, they have to be through the frame. And then once the, um, like we'll drill the holes through and then we'll put a couple bolts. All right. I got so, the uh, push cover off, which is was right here covering these valves, these push valves. So I cleaned uh, here and nowhere, like a, and around. So that's all clean. I also got the, so that gives me the cover. Which I have spent quite a significant amount of time uh, cleaning and getting ready for paint. So it was mostly just cool. trying to get the gasket off. I got the valve cover off and I just cleaned up uh, this surface along for the, to getting ready for the gasket. Uh, this is, oops, sorry, really close. Uh, so I have the push cover. It's really off neat seeing well. the rockers. I mean, everything looks really like mint condition. It looks really, really good. Uh, nice and solid, uh, though like, not as if I wouldn't recognize any kind of wear, but nothing's really evident. Um, it's really cool. I mean, seeing the entire engine like uh, apart like this, like the only thing that we haven't taken off is the, I guess the, the head. I guess so if, if I took off these, um, these big screws or bolts, nuts, whatever, uh, that would expose the pistons underneath. I believe. Uh, I just, in order to open up the valve cover, I'm not sure if it was necessary, but I, I took the time to take out the, the screw. This is black, like pitch. Uh, here, I got this. <laughs> got an idea, pure white. <laughs> pure black. So yeah, just pitch. So obviously, very, 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 very due for an oil change, hopefully no, and not too, too bad. Um, I was considering keeping the oil filter on in order to do uh, the seafoam treatment, but I might actually buy another uh, another fuel filter just to do the seafoam treatment and then put another fuel filter on, to, like, uh, when I put the... Because I bought enough oil. Uh, I don't think this is... No, this is not even synthetic. I just uh, bought regular oil. Um, to give, like, just run the, the, the motor for, like, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll follow the instructions, but it's, like, 100 kilometers or something like that with the seafoam, and, um, and then, uh, you just kind of empty it out again, and it gives it a nice flush and clean of all the valves, so. Very cool. Um, another update. I have, I installed the, the tanks again. It was, uh... I didn't want to take this off from the tank, so I actually cut the lines right here, so I soldered them back on. I reconnected the lines. I just got to get these the little clamps. To, uh, I'll buy a new clamps to put those on. Um, the rest of it's wired. The Sadly, the pump, the inline pump broke. Uh, this connector... Come on. Whatever. Anyway, this, this connector here broke off. So I'm going to have to buy a new pump. 
I think that was like a hundred dollars, if not more. So that kind of that really sucks. I'm not even sure if the other fuel pump is going to work. Hopefully it does. It was working, you know, when I when I took the the, the so truck. Good apart. news. I got the tires off, and the brakes don't look too bad. Uh, like you know, rust, but the the parts themselves look look not too bad. I got a lot of um, rust off of the off the drums, but underneath. I actually just coated them with the uh, Osfo. Underneath, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty, um, like, you know, moderately straight. <laughs> Not sure. I mean, and even the, the like, the metal looks, this seems pretty thick. Um, I might have to, like, take a look at uh, what a drum looks like. Even, the pads still have uh, quite a bit of material on them. So I'm thinking uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave the, brake, the brakes as it is. Got the front end back on. I got this uh, full mount kit, uh, thinking that I absolutely needed to replace everything, but finally I just had to replace these. So uh, I actually had to get a step drill to widen this hole because it was like they, I guess they welded on new like a washer to put on the other uh, like the way that this was on before. That really didn't work. So in order to st to, to get this to fit perfectly. I really had to uh, widen out that hole. So once that was done, this went on just fine. A little wobbly because obviously it's on uh, with the poly polyurethane or poly yeah polyurethane uh, discs. So that's pretty neat. Uh, a lot cleaner than it was before. Uh, so that the front end is going to be nicely supported. Um, I'm going to be able to put on. Uh, yeah, this 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 part need to, needed to be put on in order to be able to put the radiator back on, hook up the coolant in order to turn on the engine once the valve covers are in place. Which valve covers? Uh, I think the gasket is actually coming in today. Uh, it's out for delivery now, so hopefully it'll get here. So it's either I'm going to get it today or tomorrow. Um, but uh, I cleaned up the valve cover here, and it's oh sorry, not not the valve cover, the push cover gasket. Um, yeah, this this thing had to be cleaned up. I kind of stripped them both with uh, the, the kind of industrial paint stripper, and and uh, I'll be able to paint that uh, with a coat of. Oh crap! I gotta wash my hands here. Uh, try to show you quickly because I just got. I think I just got paint stripper on my hands. Um, yeah, coat of primer, and so. This is sandable primer. Yeah. This is uh, the engine enamel. So this is the primer and then the high heat paint afterwards on both of those. Nice red. That should look lovely. Uh, and that's going on right on the top. And then the, um, so the valve cover is going there. And then the push rod cover is uh, going on the side, right beside the uh, ignition, uh, ignition thing. So once that's on, we can get the uh, intake manifold back on. Uh, that's kind of been polished, and uh, then I'll be. I should also get the um, vacuum lines uh, that are broken from uh, whatever this doohickey. So once I replace the vacuum lines, then uh, we should be able to put the intake manifold back on. Uh, I could do it afterwards, but it's going to be easier to see where those things are routing. Uh, Yesterday, I, I broke this um, um, this vent or whatever. It's like a return ventilation from the fuel lines uh, through the um, uh, anyway through the emission system. Uh, I broke that while replacing the uh, battery wire. Because check this out, I had seen this when I was doing <laughs> repairs completely. Uh, broken to, to crap uh, on so, so this is the wire that was going to the starter so I bought a new one of that replaced that put it right into uh, you can kind of see it past the exhaust there you see the red all the way down the bottom so that's going to the starter uh, hopefully that that fixes that issue um, so yeah we're gonna be once once all the engines back in I'm gonna have to put in the fenders and um, the wheel wells in order to get the rest of the systems in. I don't know how else I'm going to start the car without having kind of put all this back together. Hey guys, I think this is the second time filming. <laughs> anyway, um, a really important part of uh, reassembling the engine, putting the covers back on properly. This is the biggest reason 
for engine uh like losing oil oil leaking in these old engines it's the valve covers and the push rod cover so uh, i've decided to there's all kinds of techniques that i've been researching but basically it boils down to uh this gasket uh, permatex gasket maker um, I, uh, the only thing that I was able to, the only gasket I was able to find for the bush cover or the valve cover was a cork cover. So I'm going to use this completely, just making, I'm going to make the new gasket, put, I'm going to put this stuff onto the engine block, uh, and then push this on, on top of it, let it dry for an hour and then torque it. Uh, as for the push rod cover, I'm still using the gasket maker, but underneath this nice rubber gasket that I found, the only thing I'm worried about is that you see that it's kind of twisting it's no matter how much I want to place it. Uh, I think it's just just the way that it was like packaged. It's just it wants to twist on itself. So uh, even when I place it, it, it fits pretty well. It needs to be stretched out a little bit. Um, but as soon as like I let it go, it goes back like that. So I'm not sure if this is really going to stick it on. Um, it kind of worries me a little bit. I wonder if I should um, get a. I kind of um, messed up. I put the gasket uh, the the gasket maker on the engine. Because of all these components around, it was really, really hard. It was pretty much for me impossible to get a constant bead the whole way around, enough to, for me to have confidence that I was actually going to seal it. So I ended up just putting the uh, the uh, cork gasket on top of the RTV uh, and then cranking it down. So, I mean, uh, some RTV is better than no RTV. Uh, and, and at least I'm not going to be any worse than I would have been without just with the cork gasket. And this is my way. I put some RTV, uh, gasket maker underneath the actual rubber gasket and I clamped it all in place. So that's going to have 24 hours to actually sit and, uh, dry so that when it's actually dry, I can just put that, the, the rubber right against the engine and it should make a really nice seal. So yeah, another update, I got my front shocks to match the awesome rear shocks. So these are, are different because they they have the pin on the top here that comes in and just sits, sits in there and goes up there. So yeah, uh, both very hefty and we call that heavy duty shocks. Took me honestly 10 minutes to put those two in. Uh, super easy with the right equipment, I guess. Now, uh, the gasket has uh, has been in for an hour, so it's now time to do the final torque. And that's the big thing. As long as you have a, a good torque wrench, this is set right now. You see how it says 10, and then two notches below, so I'm lined up to the 8, a little bit even under the 8. And I checked three times. Uh, in the, um, the manual, it says 87 or 90 f uh, foot pound which translates to eight inch pound and these are uh, in crank these in a star pattern just slowly and uh, i'm not gonna film this i need both hands but i'm gonna go in a star pattern like start over there go across go across and then you keep on kind of tweaking 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 until you hear the click of the of the torque hammer torque wrench and that you'll know when you're on the right string all right we're ready to put the push valve cover back into place on the side there uh again i'm not gonna be able to film this part because i can't hold the phone and film at the same time but uh, i'm basically just taking these screws five six screws uh they gave us new washers with the with the gasket that goes on top of there screws goes inside you can start from the the middle and you move outwards in either direction and the torque in this is basically just a couple of like a quarter turn or a half a turn after uh what you can do with your hands so it's really not much torque and supposedly the springiness of the uh, of the cap is going to be enough to be and make a seal so uh this is just like light metal uh sheet metal so yeah so i'll show you guys once it's done all right so covers on and i got the dielectric grease the little smudgy grease on top of the caps i'm about to start putting in the spark plugs. So I got my trusty drawing here <laughs> to tell me which one goes to what. So all I gotta do is uh, measure out the length. So I'll start with uh, like a, I'll just pick one and then I'll measure the length of that one. 
which basically just is taking one of these, one of these new ones, and then putting it beside that one to make sure that it's about the same length, and then tracing it, I'll start by plugging it in on the one end, the same spot there, and then putting it, tracing it from here to, I guess this one, turns out to be the first spark plug, but the next one, like, see, like the, the next one, if I go kind of uh, clockwise, it actually goes to the uh, second to the last spark plug. So I'm just gonna keep going, measuring it out and plugging it in the same spot that it was. And there you have it, folks. There you have it. Push rod cover installed and uh, hopefully torqued properly. And uh, the ignition coils, I, I guess, uh, uh, attached to back installed into the onto the spark plugs. Again, hopefully, properly installed. And that's pretty much it. That that's so the next episode. Yeah, that, that's it for this episode. The next episode. Hi guys. Oh, you see me in a bit. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy, are still enjoying the series. Um, maybe uh, as an additional information, I actually went to the paint shop. Hopefully, this is not too too far. I can't see myself. I guess I could flip it around, but whatever. Um. I actually went to the body shop for a quote to see like what how can I if I wanted to get the truck painted uh by them how could I prep the 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 truck to uh like cost me less money and uh he tried to dissuade me from from doing the body work at all just leave it as the weld and let them um put the fiberglass and the body filler and all that stuff in because he said that people always screw it up and then they'll paint over it no problem within 6 months the paint will start bubbling and and uh, and that's never fun for for a project that I put so many hours, and uh, so I was almost ready to to give him. He was uh, he was quoting me for the all the body work because there's still some stuff to, to to fix. You see the rust on the top of the windshield. He was like saying that that has to come out. There's no way it, you have to take out the windshield and then f like rip out that like the the, the rusted stuff. Um, so he was going to do all that for uh, about a thousand dollars. So all the body work and including that patch. And the rust work, and then uh, the paint job, full fully painted, uh, was going to be about two thousand dollars. So three thousand in all, way too much money. I, so I was like, okay, well, I guess I want to. You know, I've been putting so much time in it, and I want to make sure that I do it right. And then I then well, I was driving home. I was like, screw that, man. Like uh, for three thousand dollars, I can get because the reason one of the reasons I didn't want to paint it because is because I didn't think I had um, a good enough compressor. For the uh, eight uh, for the uh, spray gun, and it turns out yesterday I found I found a very highly reviewed um, uh, high volume low. Um, it's a, a it, my little good. compressor is actually within the specs of that gun. So, uh, and the gun is like one hundred and forty dollars, even cheaper for you guys, uh, you guys in the, in down in the states. I think it's like hundred bucks. It's uh, less than that. So uh, that's actually really good news. That means. So, because I was thinking, why would I spend, even if I do a, a, a job that's going to bubble up, at least I'll have the equipment to sand it and do it again. And also, what would I learn if I let somebody else do it? This, like, I've done everything, everything myself up until now with the help of YouTube, a lot of research, a lot of reading, just constant, constant research. So, I might as well see this project through. And it's going to cost me a lot less money. Um, I got a paint quote. I think for about six hundred dollars, actually four hundred dollars, for about yeah, for about four hundred dollars, I can get a. They have a, a value line that you can you have to choose within a certain uh, palette of colors. I haven't seen the colors yet, but I'm not really fussy about the color as long as it's not like a white or a black um, or pink, you know, so like something like that. But I, I, if I can find forest green, I would definitely do that. Otherwise, uh, some type of blue uh, would be fine as well. Orange. Um, the idea is red, like there's some colors that are more expensive. So I'm going to go see what the co the color palette is. So for like $400 of paint, that's the $200 of primer, uh, about, I think it was like $200 for the actual paint and then 35 and $50 for hardener and, uh, dilute, uh, something to dilute it to, to be able to spray. So somewhere around like four or $500. So that's a heck of a lot better than 3000. And for a, and the spray gun at about a hundred dollars, hundred hundred forty dollars. So altogether, that's like I could do the paint job five times 
So all I'm doing is I'm spending time and I'm really enjoying myself, especially now that all the rust is most of the rust freaking roof. Uh, and I have an idea for the roof. I'm going to put, I'm going to uh, use my Osvo, sand it down, uh, uh, sand it down, and then uh, use, probably put fiberglass on top of it uh, to, to try to keep the water away. And if it lasts three years, then it lasts three years. We can redo the roof uh, later on. So that's that's my game plan for now. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So uh, sorry for the little bit of rambling at the end, but I wanted to keep you guys up to date on where we're heading. Uh, but uh, it's going pretty well. I mean, the, the last real stress, body work is not, doesn't really stress me because I can keep redoing it. What really stresses me now is getting this baby back up and running. Uh, I, I bought an OB, uh, OBS one scanner uh to read i didn't even know there was a reader but like what did i know before starting this i haven't found this yet or i haven't looked for it yet but supposedly there's a there's like a uh, i don't know i guess i'll have to find it there's a hookup somewhere on the computer and when you start it up there's certain codes that'll give you i'm assuming it's not a, like a wide variety of 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 diagnostics but hey anything's better than nothing because I am I very, very doubt that once I connect everything together that this thing is just going to turn over. <laughs> it worked before I started, but I, I, put this, I pulled this thing all completely apart. So I haven't really touched much of the electrics, electronics, so that at least there's that. I mean, we unplugged a couple of things uh, from the intake, the valves, and some sensors and stuff. But not like, hopefully, hopefully, you know, everything goes well. I would really like to take the time to paint in the back there, but I, I don't think I'm gonna, not this year. I might uh, do that another year. Uh, I think I've done, I'm gonna be, I have enough body work to do later on. Okay, on that, sorry again for the, for the long ramble, but um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the, uh, the episode and um, I'll catch you guys next time.